Hi there guys, welcome back to the Tower Tech. This episode is all about radiators. We're going to be talking about how you get a radiator ready to put into a water cooling loop, what you need to do, how you flush it, how you make sure that you don't contaminate your loop before you can connect other components to it. Actually, this episode's probably going to be pretty boring. You, you probably shouldn't watch it. Or should you watch this? What can go wrong if you don't flush a radiator? particulates of solder floating around in your loop, messing up the gear mechanism in your motor, various chemicals that clog up the various fins that run over the uh, heat sinks that go over the GPU and CPU. Really bad stuff can happen if you don't flush this radiator. So, I suggest you watch. I've got two different types of radiators here with me and this is just to give you a sense of how complex do I want to make it for myself? What sort of PC am I building? And am I going for ease of use or am I going for absolute maximum cooling capacity? The first one is an all-in-one unit. So this includes uh, pump, tubing, fluid, radiator, all in one unit. You can't dismantle this, you can't add other components in later on, but it is really, really, really straightforward. So you have a block that goes over the CPU within that block is the pump. There's a single fan header that runs off. You, you plug that into the CPU fan header and that powers the pump. Some tubing then that runs through into a radiator. So there's absolutely no maintenance required on this and there's very, very little preparation other than actually fitting the unit into your PC. So this is a very good first step for somebody who's interested in water cooling. The reality of the cooling capacity of one of these is they're on par, perhaps marginally better than a very good air cooling heat sink sitting on top of your CPU. But it does give you a, a good first taste into what is involved in fitting a radiator in, into your case. We talked about fin density in a previous video. So this is the number of fins spread over an inch. Typically what you find in these radiators is that the radiator is very thin. The fin density is very high in order to compensate for the thinness of the radiator, make sure that the right cooling capacity is there. The consequence of having a very high fin density is that you get an awful lot of noise when fans are pushing air between the various fins. So if I just get a little bit closer to the camera, you should be able to see through the radiator, and that gives you a sense of So very straightforward to do, very straightforward to fit, a good first step, it does compromise on the cooling capacity. In contrast, here I've got uh, an individual radiator on its own, so this requires you to fit custom tubing, select your own water block, this is for a fully customised water cooling loop. This particular unit is from Alphacool, and Alphacool are particularly renowned for having lots of gunk and particulates within their radiators. So all radiators that you have bought for a custom loop require flushing before you put them into the loop. When they manufacture these, when they solder the various components together, there is flux that gets inside the radiator, which can be dislodged by the fluid when it's flowing through your loop, which can uh, wrap itself within the various components and can cause an awful lot of problems for your pump. It's also spray painted, particularly around the edges, it's black on the sides. When they spray these things, the various holes are open and exposed and you get particulates of paint that go inside the unit. There's also a grease and various chemicals that are used in the manufacturing process, all of which are a bit unpleasant. So what's the consequence of not flushing one of these? It can lead to corrosion in your loop. It can corrode the various components, the, the nickel or the copper that make up the blocks that sit on the GPU or the CPU. Um, and as already discussed, the solder in particular can cause problems for your pump. So I'm gonna show you now how you prepare and get a radiator ready to install in your loop. Things that you're gonna need. 
you'll need some soft tubing. You're going to need two fittings to go onto the end of your tubing. Ideally, these should be compression fittings. Compression fitting has a barb and it has a cap that screws down on this. Let me show you how you do that. You take your aforementioned tubing, you take your cap, you slide that down over your tubing. Make sure that the thread is facing towards the end of the tubing that you want to put your barb into. The barb slides into your tubing. Keep it clean. You then screw the compression down onto the tube. You then take your radiator. Now your radiator is going to have multiple ports on it. It may have one on the end. It will depend on the model that you've got. It will certainly have ones on the top and the sides at the end that the, uh, that the various connections are going to go into. You need two of these holes to be free. Taking one of your free holes, you're going to screw your compression fitting into the free hole. All of the screw threads for water cooling are a standard G1 quarter thread fitting, so the chances of you getting it wrong are pretty much non-existent. So you've got your tubing fitted into your radiator. You need to get yourself a small plastic funnel. I got this one from an automotive store. And effectively what you're going to do is push that funnel into your tubing. Now, the tubing is unlikely to be the same diameter as the funnel. So uh, the way that I got mine into the tubing is I heated up the tubing by placing it in uh, some near boiling water. The tubing then became soft. I could then ply the funnel into the tubing funnel take that and you ease it into your tubing so that effectively is going to give us the uh, the, the fill port if you like where we're going to pour water into the radiator which is going to flush all of that gunk out we repeat the same process with another piece of tubing screw that onto the other side that becomes our outflow port So, we've got our two pieces of tubing fitting, one with the funnel that's going to be our inflow port, another one which is going to be our outflow port, and all of the other various uh, ports are uh, closed off with stoppers in them. You're also going to need some distilled water. Now, distilled water is subtly different from deionized water. Fundamentally different products. It's quite an important distinction. Deionized water is to do with the way in which the electrical properties of the water are configured. Distilled water has had all of the impurities removed from the water and that is what we are after. We don't want any uh, algae that's going to grow in a loop, we don't want any gunk that's going to clog it up. So distilled water is the water that you're after, not deionized water. Now I live in the UK, distilled water is really really difficult to get hold of. The best place to go to is Amazon. I picked this up on Amazon, I, I think it was about seven or eight quid. Next day delivery on their prime service, really quick and simple to do. I'd, I'd pick yourself up two or three of these if you're, if you're seriously into custom water cooling loops. You're going to need a glass bowl. You're going to use this to boil the distilled water. Now I highly recommend that you do not use pots and pans that you use for your cooking. No matter how well you have cleaned those, they are not going to be free of contaminants. A glass bowl like this is quite easy to get, completely clean. It means that you can put the distilled water in it, you can microwave it in the microwave with some cling film over the top, you remove the potential for particulates to be in that water. Do not use your standard cooking pots and pans. Last and by no means least, you need some white distilled vinegar. Right, let's go flush the radiator. This is really straightforward to do. We take our glass bowl, take our distilled water, tip the distilled water into our glass bowl, take some cling film, cover the glass bowl, make a couple of holes, then we go microwave. Take our cling film off. And we're going to add a very small amount of distilled white vinegar. 
should be no more than 10% of the total volume of fluid that's in there. That's plenty. Give that a little swirl. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tip this mixture into the radiator. It's really important that you don't get the mixture on the outside of the radiator. It's gonna cause it to corrode and rust. So be careful, do this over a sink and make sure that you're using the pump. Here we go. Try to avoid touching the fins while you're moving the radiator around. They are fragile. If you touch them, if you grasp down on them, you are gonna break them. You can probably see from this tubing here that I've overfilled this radiator slightly, so we're just gonna tip a little bit of the mixture out so that we can give the radiator a good shake. We'll unscrew our tubing. We're gonna give this a little rock backwards and forwards. You can probably hear the fluid working its way around. Now you can either put some stoppers in these holes or you can securely put your thumb and hand over the holes like this and what we're going to do is we're going to give it a really good shake almost like we're making a cocktail and you want to do this probably for a couple of minutes. Once you've finished that, leave it for about 30 seconds. We want to screw our piece of tubing back in. We want to drain the radiator out. Again, you don't want to just tip it out the holes because you're going to get the mixture all over the radiator. That's going to cause us a world of pain. So screw our tubing back in. With the other hole uncovered so that air can replace the fluid that's inside the radiator, we're going to tip the fluid out. We're not going to tip it into the sink. What we're going to do is we're going to tip it into a bowl. The reason that we're going to do that is that it gives us the opportunity to examine the fluid, see how clear it is and how many particulates are in it. I like to use a little colour bowl like this. It allows me to see the gunk that's in the fluid a little bit more clearly. Uh, certainly do not be using the bowl that you're going to be continuing to boil your distilled water in. So here we go. Now what you can probably see is the fluid is slightly blue. That's all of the flux that's coming out of the radiator. You're almost certainly not gonna be able to pick it up on the camera, but there are little particulates of paint and metal that are floating in there as well. You need to keep repeating this process until the water is broadly clear. Now, particularly with an alcohol radiator, you're not gonna get it 100% clear. You're probably looking at a good nine or 10 flushes through before the radiator is ready to go in. Guys, this isn't the most exciting part of water cooling. It's often the most overlooked part of water cooling and it will cause you problems later on if you don't do it. Once you've done eight or nine flushes with the vinegar distilled water mix, make sure that you do at least two flushes with just distilled water at the end. You don't want to leave vinegar inside of your unit. It's going to cause it to corrode. So that's how you flush a radiator. Um, perhaps not the most exciting video in the world about water cooling, but it is very important. So I wish you all the very best. If you're not yet subscribed, please do so by bashing the button down there. And I'll see you in my next video.